was scary. It was. <laughs> Her cutting my hair. Oh, yeah. oh, in the, in yeah, the film? Cutting my yeah. hair. I like my hair. Yeah, you know? so was that it's actually you cutting it in the, in the yeah, movie? Yeah, but I learned a trick how to not cut it for <laughs> real. You did. I didn't even ask you that on the day. I was, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was you film You just trusted me. I just trusted but you. But that was after one month in uh, Italy. So yes. you, you were just like this, you know. That's it. Trusted everybody. Oh. What, what was it like <laughs> filming in Italy for both oh, of you? Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, it, was, it was a dream job. Yeah. Once in a lifetime. Truly magnificent. Once in a lifetime in the sense of being able to tell a story about these great characters who are so broken and mangled and, you know, twisted by life in some respects. Just humans. And uh, in this great setting, Give Sorrento. Cool place. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's good work if you can get it, right? Always. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Always, yeah. Well, Pierce, let me ask you for a second about sort of in your post Bond career, choosing projects. What kind of is the criteria you're looking for, and what was it about this film that, that really spoke to you? Oh, good stories, good heartfelt stories, uh, the people involved. Uh, the actors that you're going to be working with, the director, there's all there's many ingredients to it that uh, makes your decision possible. And in this case, it was Susanna Bear. I knew her work. I'd seen in a better world. I was bedazzled by Trina. Fell in love with Trina in this film. She was just so such a revelation for me. Uh, and then, lo and behold, the job, this job, you know, came to me, and I said immediately yes. Was it challenging to sort of, because you're sort of in a foreign film in a sense, <clears throat> was it sort of challenging for you as an actor to... It, the, 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 there was a, a deep concern that I would upset the apple cart, so to speak, okay. and uh, you know, the morning I read the script and I read it from cover to cover, and I immediately called Susanna up and said, I really adore this and I, I'd love to be part of it. However, how do I fit in? And she said, don't worry, I'll make it happen. It'll be fine. Everyone speaks English and no worries. And yeah. It, be, it became so. It yeah, was, it was an easy fit. Well, Trina, let me ask you, um, your character, Ida, is a very complicated character. She has a lot going on <laughs> in this film. Yeah, yeah. many layers. Yeah. What, could you talk about kind of preparing to play this role? Well, it, it, it is, you know, as it always is, you have to read the script over and over again to find out what all the details about the characters. and. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I have some close friends with cancer and family, and so I know a lot about that issue. And um, then I just, you know, started to create uh, her physically. Uh, I worked a lot with the wig and, and, you know, with the dresses and high heels, and I, I just wanted her to be very alive in hair and body, in a way, like this. Yeah. And she, she's kind of... In a way, she's very strong, but she's also Bambi on ice. It's, Bambi it's, on ice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a new beginning. It's like yeah. she's kind of has to learn how to stand up for herself and walk for her wish and her dreams so and well. her life. And so, so yeah, I, I just you know try to find all the nuances and levels. Yeah. And I, I think it's always interesting to find the opposite in a character. And I mean to. Yeah, to work with all the things you, you, you don't see. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then finally, I just want to ask you both about sort of this reluctant attraction between Philip and Ida and, and this almost reluctant love that both of you end up sharing. Well, for my character, who is uh, still in the grief of losing a wife, uh, he is uh, emotionally dormant and he's fearful of letting his heart go. He's fearful of love. He's fearful of his own self and adrift in how to communicate with people in the world. Finds himself back in the home that he had so many dreams that are now unfulfilled in this lemon grove. He's a farmer, really, and uh, a son who he's got a disconnect from and a wedding that he doesn't really want to take place. So I think from the word go, he sees this this magnificent woman, this beautiful lady who is obviously sick and he's bedazzled by her, intrigued. And slowly his heart just is taken over and he lets it happen, love. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> yeah. Well, for Ida, it's kind of the same. I think she realized it uh, very late, actually, how much she fell in love with mm. Philip. And, and, and there is a point where she actually takes back her husband. And I think it's because she, she thinks this is what there is for me in life. You know? And, and she doesn't dare to to walk her way, but he gives her the strength in a way to, to do it in the end. Well, how can you say no to this guy? I mean, look at this exactly. handsome man right here. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>